And so as I read a scripture in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I want to read the first six verses. And again, in these six verses, Paul is revealing to us he coming off a high place. In fact, when you read the first six verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about an experience he had that will blow your mind. He said, I went to the third heavens. And Paul is the only human being that truly went to the third heavens. He's the only human being that got to see heaven and came back to talk about it. And in this scripture, he says, there were things that I saw that is even illegal for me to talk about. He said, I went to the third heavens. Look at the scripture, Second Corinthians chapter 12. Reading from verse number one. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. He said, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the bodily, I do not know. Or whether out of the body, I do not know. But God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to author. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will speak the truth. For I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. He said, I saw things there that are unlawful to author. He said, I don't even have the words to talk about what I saw when I visited the third heavens, paradise. He said, I can't even put it in human words. I don't know all that heaven is going to offer. You know, the, the only thing we know as people of God is that the Bible gives us glimpses. If you think everything we're going to see in heaven is recorded in the Bible, you, you are deceived. The scriptures only gives us glimpses of some of the things we're going to encounter in heaven. Paul said the stuff that I saw in heaven, it is unlawful for me to even talk about it. And he says because of this place God allowed me to encounter it is possible for me to become so prideful. It is possible for me to get to a place of feeling, you know, you know how we begin to smell ourselves. He says it's possible for me to get to that place because of the encounter, the place God brought me, a place of privilege, a place no human being has ever gone to and come back to life. He said it's possible for me to boast and walk in pride. And after coming off his, this, this high place he's talking about, he says something so powerful in verse 7. He says, because of this encounter, because of this experience I had by going into heaven, going into the third heaven, going into paradise because of this. Because of this experience. Because of this knowledge. Look at what he says in verse 7. He said, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of what? The revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. He said it was what? A thorn in the flesh was given to me. A messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I be exalted above measure. And then he says concerning this then I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. And that's why I'm talking about grace to carry on. He says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, I am strong. But look at what he says in verse 7. He says, because of this encounter I had in heaven, 
there was given me a thorn in the flesh. Because God got me to this high place, a place where no man have ever gone before and come back to this realm. There was given to me a thorn in my flesh. Satan, Satan's messenger to buffet me. So Paul is saying that because of this encounter I had, there is a tendency for me to exalt myself and make believe that I'm higher than what God expects me to be. So God had to put something in my life to remind me that I gave you a privilege, but don't think wrong about yourself. I gave you that privilege, but don't think wrong about yourself. I don't know if there is anybody here listening to me who thinks wrong about themselves, but there's been so many times we think wrong about ourselves. We think that we are bigger, we are higher, we are something we're not. He says, I'm going to allow Satan to buffet you. I'm going to send a messenger of Satan to deal with you so that you would be reminded consistently that you cannot continue independent of God. A lot of us get a little money now and we're like, we don't need God. We don't need to come to church. We don't need to pray. We don't need to read a word. We get a little car that we haven't even finished paying for. And we think we don't need God. Somebody gets a little house that a bank would soon take away in foreclosure. And we think we don't need God. Isn't it amazing that when we are in need, we come to God, we pray our heart out, we cry, God, I need that, I need this blessing. And suddenly God orchestrates a blessing that releases that need in our lives. And soon, that same thing we cry to God. That job we cried out to God for God to give us, that becomes the reason why we don't want to have anything to do with God. That same job God gave you takes you away from God. That same car God gave you takes you away from God. That same husband, that same wife becomes the reason why you don't want to have anything to do with God. And sometimes it doesn't take much. People begin to put a little accolade in front of your name. And it suddenly changes who you are. A little title. A little title. You know, I hear people say that since he became rich, he's become so proud. No, he's always been proud. That's who he is. The money just revealed who he was. None of these things change us. It reveals our true identity. But I love what Paul is saying. He said because of this unique experience, when God has bumped you up, you know how God is able to bump you up? In Jamaica, they say, big him up. God bumps you up. Big up, big up. <laughs> A little recognition and significance and you see people change. He wants to make sure that you don't forget where you came from. That is the goal of God. And sometimes it's not because he bumped you up. It's because he's planning to bump you up. Because some of us haven't been bumped up. But God is planning to bump us up. It means you haven't arrived yet where he's designed you to be. He's planning. He's purposing. He's preparing you to that place. And so he allows you to be buffeted. And the reason is because he wants you to think right. Before you get to the place he's designed for you. He allows a turn. I love the way, you know, uh, Paul calls it. He said it, it was giving me a thorn in the flesh. It was giving me. If you're listening to me, I wanted to type it out. It was giving me. That's what he says. He says, it was giving me. Can you imagine? He said, it was giving me a thorn in my flesh. <laughs> I mean, obviously, he doesn't tell us what a thorn is. He says, it was given to me. Translation, it was a gift. A gift can be a thorn. There are people that are gifts in your life, but sometimes you could tell they are torn. They are torn. Mm. You ever had a car that you were all excited when you got it? Yeah, that car sends you to the workshop every time. 
It causes you to swipe your debit card, your credit card. It runs you into debt. That which brought joy to you right now is a thorn. But then I love what he says because he also calls it a messenger of Satan. A messenger of Satan. It could be a person because he doesn't tell us what it is. But one thing we know is that in the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 15, Bible talks about the fact that Paul had an eye problem. So we don't know if that was what he was referring to. We can only guess. He talks about the need for new eyes. He talks about the need for a restoration of his eyes. He obviously had an eye problem. So it could be he had a physical ailment which was a thorn in his flesh. And there are some of us that have that kind of health ailment where you are praying to God, God take this pain away from my life. God take this rheumatoid arthritis. Lord take this disease out of my life. And anytime you went to God, God says, no, 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 keep it there. Take more grace. Grace to carry on. You're like, God, that's not what I need. I need healing. And he calls it a messenger of Satan. He's talking about tawny people in your life. Tawny people. Tawny persons in your life. You could tell some people are just a torn. You go to the office, you see some of them there. They are torn in the flesh. Some of you, your biological family, you know some aunties and uncles who are torn in your flesh. And some of you can almost tell some in-laws can become outlaws. They are torn in the flesh. They are. <laughs> Recently, I visited my brother in the UK and a wife had a lot to say about our mom. She's a white British and she's like, you know, I've learned all this African food and one day I prepared a different meal and, you know, your mom came and your mom was, you never cook this kind of soup for my son again. And she's like, your son is almost 60 years old. We've been married for 30 years. What's your problem? <laughs> he said, I didn't say that to her, but that was crazy. He said, everything I did for my husband, she had a problem with it. You don't cook that for my son. Really? For this reason. For this reason. Bible says a man will leave what? But there are some mothers who never cut off the diapers. They still want to follow the kids into the marriage. <laughs> he said, you don't cook that for my son. Hmm. Amazing. Now, if you look at verse 10, even though Paul calls this a messenger of Satan, he says in verse 10, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress. For Christ's sake. Now he says, for when I'm weak, then I am strong. So we know very well what he's talking about here. It could be a circumstance or a person or a problem. It could be a, a health condition. It could be ailment. But one thing is true about what he's saying about this situation. It's a nagging problem. It's something that will just not go away. It's nagging you to death. And I don't know if there is anybody here listening to me that has a situation in their life that is nagging. It's nagging you to death. It is driving you nuts. Because he said it clearly. It is tormenting me. It created misery in his life. And then he calls that situation a messenger of Satan for a reason. He says a messenger of Satan was given to me. He calls it a gift. Who wants a gift that brings misery? Who wants a gift that brings pain? I want to ask a question here this morning. Has God given anybody here a gift called Satan? A gift called Satan. That is what he calls it. A messenger of Satan was given to me. It was a gift. And sometimes we, we can boldly say that I'm going through so many stuff. And I know all I'm going through is nothing but the devil. We say that. What I'm going through is nothing but the devil. Yes, it's the devil. But God gave him to you. That's what he says. 
He said, a messenger of Satan, a representative of hell, was given to me by God. But I love this because there is a spiritual purpose to this. Hmm. Now, when we go through those challenges of life, we only see what the devil is doing in our life without recognizing that God is using what the devil is doing to shape in our lives. Paul said, God did what he did so that I would not be in a position to exalt myself. 